Let's go. Logan Kindred for Pioshik, and you better believe he's going to be playing okay. his world champion skin. I was going to say, he's definitely going to be playing it. However, Core JJ on his birthday wearing his world championship Rakan skin just lost to Dignitas yesterday. So be careful with that one. It might, the world champion skins might be a curse. I am so, so down for this. I thought that there was actually no way Pioshik is ever going to get Kindred. This man started as a Kindred one-trick pony streamer and made his way all the way to Worlds and won it. Well, now we get to see it in this game, though. Big, big hubris, I feel like, from Evil Geniuses to let that one go through. They really valued the OP things on this patch, and that goes that says a lot. 13-12, a lot of the players talking about some of the big, big bombs on this patch and they really felt it necessary to ban out the double static shiv users as well as the Nico monstrosity. Yeah, I mean, Nico's just a cheat code at this point. You gotta get rid of her on red side, and then I see the value in getting rid of the shivs, but it's evil geniuses taking the recon, picking up the Ari for themselves. Over on TL's side, the Rel locked in for the support matchup. Which is also one that's really, really good on this patch right now, and, and Core JJ uh, as well as who he yesterday talking so much about this champion really really good engages from both of them uh, i mean we're jumping through this picks and bands but i already feel like team liquid is getting massive massive value out of this first three picks in champ select here huge prio picks on this patch especially considering the considering the players that are piloting the champions. So one thing I'm going to be looking for here in the second half of the draft is, are we going to get any Yeet champions? Whatever Kindred is picked, <laughs> I want to see somebody with a Yeet. Uh, whether it's some Graga, Kindred, some uh, Poppy, some... Yes, something uh, that can knock someone out of the respite and give yourself an edge in the chaos of that ability. Well, luckily for you, those two that I just named are playable in the two positions that Evil Geniuses have yet to be picked. So Gragas and Poppy definitely still on the table here. The Jacks banned out from Evil Geniuses, trying to look towards Summit, who has been such a reliable top lane carry for Team Liquid this time around, which is not something that in the past in LCS people associated with Summit, uh, you know, being so vulnerable to ganks, but it really has not shown itself thus far. So the respect to Summit there. Banning out some carry top laners. Meanwhile, Team Liquid gonna whittle down on Armeo. Uh, that Team Liquid Academy jungle captain. Take away some more of those jungle champions from him. See if they do follow it up with, with one of those two other. Yeah, where's Gragas? Where's Poppy? Where's one of those champions that can really throw a thorn in the side of the Lamb's Respite. They're really taking their time thinking this one all the way through, but only a couple seconds left. The Rek'Sai, anyway, I know you're a big um, fan of yeah. this champion. I'm not, but <laughs> hey. <laughs> Armeo is too. I uh, I know Armeo has actually played a decent amount of Rek'Sai as well, but uh, definitely has a, a big advantage with some of the compensation buffs that were given to Rek'Sai due to the removal of Prowler's Claw, so they take that one out. Ivern is in actually a very good spot on this patch. So that, get hov bamboo. That, that hover is not just for the sake of trolling. I would say do not be bamboozled yet, my friend. I'll believe it when I see it. And right now, the only thing I'm seeing is a croc locked in the top lane for revenge. It is kind of annoying to play Ivern into Kindred as well, by the way, because one of Ivern's biggest weaknesses is getting invaded and Kindred is Likes very, very good at that. <laughs> so uh, definitely uh, one of the scarier matchups for the tree lover. Renekton, though, has really risen, especially if you're watch, um, you know, LPL, uh, the blind pick priority for top lane. Renekton right now in a very good situation. Wow, I always love Ash with Kindred. The Hawk Shot gives you so much more information to work with here. Pioshik, I feel like Pioshik is set up for huge success this game. Not only did he get Kindred, but the rest of his whole team is hard engaged and they have extra vision for him. If this is not a Pioshik world champ skin Kindred <laughs> dub, then I don't know what is going to be. Okay, I'm glad to see something that can do a little bit of frontlining here for the top lane for Summit there with the Gnar, because one thing that they don't have up until that pick was <laughs> really a tank. Obviously, Rel can engage, but on a support budget, you can't be a main tank. So 
opportunities for EG to engage on a lot of different members here on TL. What's this final pick going to be? I need to see something in the jungle. Obviously, the Vi, the Wukong, the Rek'Sai, lots of jungle Viego focus coming out from TL. Used. Last time around? Yeah, buddy, his Viego is definitely nothing to scoff at, and that's what our Mayo is going to be piloting here. Let's see how aggressive he can get with it early, because top triangle of the map actually does look quite good for Evil Geniuses in the early stages, and our Mayo has been very aggressive. A lot of these early advantages that Evil Geniuses have been able to get have been off the back of his play, working especially with JoJo, but now the revenge is not on a tank, and they let him out of jail. He's <laughs> unleashed on the Renekton. He's out on Bond. You've got some more, more opportunities there. If you're able to get Renekton, Slice and Dice, Flash stuns onto Mininar, a follow-up stun from Aviego could definitely find an early kill and try and snowball top triangle of the map. Um, we'll see about the, the Kindred Marks as well, super early on in the game. Right. Very excited to see this matchup. Man, Pioshik, this is it. You said it, man. Everything on this team can enable. Let's rock and roll. It's Summoner's Rift for the third time today. Team Liquid versus Evil Geniuses. The head-to-head -to, -head to break the tie in the standings the two currently find themselves in. The man on your screen right there giving the thumbs up. JoJo has been having an awesome split here so far. And we even got the, the pre-match trash talk from him as well, talking about how crazy overrated Team Liquid is. Now it's time to show it. They give him their Kindred skin. He's doing the recall right now, by the way. Can we look at the Kindred skin? Yeah, zoom in on that. Because Piotr got a whole segment talking about everything that went into it and the recall being a shout out to his origins as a Kindred Please streamer. His little streamer set up there. Yeah, I got his stream set up. He talked about how when you place down the W, it's got the dragon scales near the edge. I when love the, the little details, yeah. When the ulti happens, you get to see the DRX logo in the middle near the end right when it pops. So a lot of cool details there on that Kindred skin. But at the start of this one, we're not going to get a whole lot. Nobody's looking for anything wild here at level one. Jan and Core JJ just going to help Pioshik out a little bit. And I do want to keep an eye on how much more information they can get with that Hawkshot like you were talking about. Kindred already loves being able to track the enemy jungler to take advantage of trying to farm up those marks, steal away those camps. And this one-two punch between these two marksmen, I think, can play out beautifully. Yeah, there's so much utility from this bottom lane that Team Liquid have drafted here. They can make plays off of Ash Arrow and, and uh, Rel engages as well later on into the game. Let's see about Core JJ versus Ayla, his former understudy. Well, Core JJ is the first one to jump in, but Ayla just smacks him right back. And Core JJ was always so complimentary of the Team Liquid Academy players that were playing uh, under him when he was on the team. When Ayla came into the LCS the first time around, Core had some really, really good words for him, talking about Ayla being the second best support in the LCS only to Core himself. Yeah. And uh, definitely has a lot of respect here between these two in the bottom lane. And remember, Ayla's coming off a victory of his own yesterday. EG taking down FlyQuest, the Ayla versus <laughs> Vulcan drama. Ayla just smacked Vulcan in that one. EG taking a direct dominant hit. win. Yeah. Battleship. There we go. Found All him right. on the Raptors. Our Mayo has been sighted on the chicken camp as Pioshik clears out his wolves. Both junglers staying on a pretty even pace compared to one another. A little bit of a stun from the Rel Q, one of the changes for the mini rework. Up there in the top side, let's see how things are going between Summit and Revenge. Revenge doing pretty good right now. Nice double knock up there from Ayla. Perfect positioning on the grand entrance. But now Core JJ is ready to counterattack. Unforgiven being attacked by that Team Liquid support. Having to pop the cleanse to get rid of the ignite as Yawn now wants to disengage. There's a lot more minions for the side of EG, which means Team Liquid backs away. Yep, and they should still be able to farm these out too. Nice little sidestep there from Yawn, not to take any extra damage in the trade. And they come up a little bit positive in the trade. Cooldowns on cleanse and heal are very short though. Yeah. So not too big of an expenditure on the evil genius side. And they do get the wave in. They do get their recalls off. And Pioshik looking for the mid lane here. Jojo flashing a wave up towards the safety of the side that his jungler is on. So Harry wanted to make the move. It's flash for flash in the mid lane. Armeo recalling on top of a ward, so Harry's aware of that. He's going to make sure he doesn't go too close to it. Pioshik will now grab the Scuttle Crab here in the bottom half of the map. Unfortunately for him, loses the coin toss on where the first mark is going to spawn, so that one did go over to Armeo. But Unforgiven 
back into the lane here. The only one currently in position in that lane after we had to see a couple of different recalls from the bottom lane duos. First teleports being used to bring both mid laners back to mid now. But those resources got spent. Armeo coming up looking for the Spectral Maw, but Summit with an immediate jump away does not want to be caught out here, does not want to end up punished for free as Core JJ brings in the crash down, forces the flash out of the EG AD carry. Now Ayla ready to counter attack, forcing the flash back out of Yawn. I he love this game. In one, two. Yeah, loving this game so far, trading flashes back and forth. Pioshik attracted to the extra skirmishing on bottom side, but so is Armeo, and they should be able to see that he's on the way. Piyoshi gonna step back there. Ooh, skirted it, but they're gonna call it off anyways. Seeing the little bit of the mist and knowing it's actually taken too long. I would definitely return mid lane though. Uh, mm -hmm. For both junglers, this is a really, really big opportunity. It's a very, very volatile matchup between Ari and Annie and both of them used their flashes in those two attempts that we saw earlier. So I feel like whichever jungler is able to get around vision and get to mid lane first to capitalize on that should be able to score a kill, especially as level sixes are coming in. And there's huge, huge burst damage build full to both of them. And I mean, especially from Pioshik's point of view, getting there before the level six for Jojo is critical since Ari gets so much mobility, so much extra ability to dodge away from those ganks once you have the ulti unlocked. But they are closing in on level six very rapidly here. Armeo gonna pick up his chickens. That is where the mark spawned for Pioshik. So still only the one mark here for the Kindred so far. And I wanna point out the vision investment from Evil Geniuses around mid lane that really, really giving Jojo the priority to push up on this Ari. He's fully confident to abuse his advantage here over Harry with his level six because they've got both sides warded. He knew he wasn't going to get ganked by Pioshik. And they even call Armeo over for the dive, but Harry's got a preemptive defensive ward to scout that one out. Yep. He knew as he's getting low, it was a possibility. So good job by him. And he drops the tippers to push Jojo back out. Yeah, Jojo gonna be forced back from that one, but he holds the Spirit Rush. Does not want to use his own ulti to get away. Recognizes Harry does not have the ability to burst him down and truly threaten his life. Pioshik coming in to try to stop Armeo from stealing away anything else. Neither jungler, level six yet, both pretty much at the start of level five. Ayla looking to potentially make a move they here as Armeo is on the other side of things. Core JJ and Pioshik also coming around from behind. Harry's got to be careful here. Uses the shield to sidestep away from the engage. Now Armeo's ready to come in. Crash down on three. Core JJ just messed Evil Geniuses up. Holy cow. Beautiful engage. Pure outplay right there from Team Liquid. Harry uses the Annie uh, shield speed up to dodge away outside the knockup from Ayla. The old teammates making a swing at each other, but Harry gets the last laugh. He dodges and he's got Core JJ in his back pocket for the counter engage on Rel. Awesome, awesome moves there from TL as Revenge using the flash trying to chase after Summit up here who doesn't even have to use his own flash to escape. The Dominus used by the Renekton for not a whole lot of gain. Let's take another look at what EG was trying to go for here. And even notice the early pings from Team Liquid. They are question mark pinging. Ayla's probably here. So Harry, he uses the speed, gets out of the knockup. And then as you go all the way in, Team Liquid had the vision, so nobody knew Core JJ was there and following, and that is a massive crash down. The trap was sprung, and the trap gets first blood. Success for TL. First blood on the Kindred 2, plus the third mark. Only needing one more, not even eight minutes into the game. That is huge if you can get that soon. Well, Flowers, we mentioned it from Champion Select about this game being set up for success for Pioshik, and it is going straight ahead with that storyline. Trinity Force will be online very quickly with that first blood. You mentioned the speed with which he's already stacking up. Those Kindred Marks just needs one more for the big range boost. And there is a mark on Raptors, but they're going straight for the Rift Trail first, knowing there's a reset timer there for Armeo. And honestly, you're talking about storylines. I think the storyline for Team Liquid in these first couple of weeks so far here in summer has just been they're playing so much better as a team. That 3v3 that we saw in the mid lane there was because everybody was on the same page. They knew how they wanted to play it. Having Harry as the bait, having Core JJ as that secret weapon to show up the ace up the sleeve. Spring Team Liquid all goes in at three different times there and gives three kills away for free. Summer <laughs> Team Liquid has finally found that synergy with these guys. I will say that they definitely needed that first blood though. You can see Evil Geniuses 
still even in gold yeah. due to the CS leads that they did have in top as well as bottom, especially mid lane as well. Yeah. Jojo's been very, very good in a lot of the early matchups in mid lane, but uh, especially the Ari versus Annie, really pushing him under tower uh, and was able to create some of his own advantages. So despite Team Liquid being the ones that get success in the first play and their counter engage in the follow through from poor JJ, it is evil geniuses that still have um, pretty, pretty close gold as well as getting first dragon for themselves. Harry gonna have Pioshik shattering him here in the river yet again, but the zombie ward means that Pioshik's not gonna get a whole lot done. Does summon up the Herald here in mid lane, drops the eye. Just gonna use this one to force a little bit of plate money away from Jojo. Armeo coming up through the side in case this would turn into a 2v1. It'll be a 2v2 instead, but nope, only a plate and a half. Goes over to TL. Pioshik back up into the top That's side of the map. Four, baby. That is a mark right there on that scuttle crab. And so for Pioshik, it's a 10-minute four-stack Kindred. That feels great. Now that we're getting into the point of the game where we might see some of these larger skirmishes. All right, turn on the world champ now. Let's see it. Jojo's messing around mid. He still has Flash and ult as Ari, though, so yeah, he's probably, probably nothing there. Even uses his mid push to make a look bottom. Pioshik starting up his own chicken camp here. Jojo is nearby. Probably just going to try to throw out the Orb of Deception and steal away some of these baby chickens. He just used Q again inside Raptor Pit and... All right, he's back out. He's fine. Summit, meanwhile, about to get a solo kill on Revenge. Already used the Mega Nar, so doesn't have it there to slam him into the wall. Started off the fight with that one instead. Yoshik recalling as Harry and Jojo continue to just try to farm it up back and forth. Jojo's nearly out of mana, so there's not like he can do a whole lot more here. Just wants to clear this wave out and then find his way back to the base soon to get some more resources ready to go. Trinity Force completed on Yoshik. First fully completed item this game, and man, it's a good one. Definitely a big spike for him. Let's see where he goes with it because you also have Ash Arrow. So Team Luka have a lot of options right now to be very proactive with their gameplay. Harry, Annie, ultimate flash in mid. Ash Arrow as well could start it out. If you fire the Ash Arrow from Fog of War, even a long distance one, maybe you can make a play. See what they can actually set up here because Kindred will have the damage to follow up on any of these engages. Yeah, Team Liquid drafted so many stuns to try and make use of that. The little stop here with the W, nice from Pioshik. Delays yep. Unforgiven and cancels his recall. Harry just using the Tibbers for tempo here in the mid lane. Getting a quick trade onto Jojo. Trying to maintain extra control over this mid lane wave as Pioshik and Core JJ stand off in the river against Armeo and Ayla. Armeo and Ayla do not want to overcommit to anything just yet, but Pioshik uses the extra power he has from the completed item, from that power spike to grab a quick trade onto his opponent, but nothing super meaningful, nothing that's going to last a whole long time. As Jojo, again, is in the sights of Pioshik, who has made so many trips close to mid. Even if we only have the one kill on the board, Pioshik keeps trying to sniff around and see if there's anything to find there. But it is still a gold lead of about 500 for Evil Geniuses, despite the one kill lead for their opponents, because of what you're talking about. Plus 17 farm in mid, plus 10 in top, plus 23 in bottom lane. EG lanes are winning across the board. Interesting uh, rotation from EG, though. They brought Revenge all the way down from top lane to handle the mid lane wave while Jojo rotated from mid lane down to bottom lane. But that means you get a free turret plate for Summit on top side, and you're losing some minions on the top side. So that little rotation almost even losing two turret plates here. Summit softening up the second one. Yep. As they try to retain the extra wave towards mid, rotate Jojo to the bottom, and now they've slotted Unforgiven in mid instead. But that means Pioshik heads immediately up towards topside as well. Thankfully for Revenge, there's a ward here. And Summit has just gone back to Mininar anyway. All right, what do we want to see from either side, I guess, to accelerate the pace of this game? Because both sides seem pretty content, just sort of letting things go forward right now. But maybe EG is coming down to make the play. Caster Curse complete. Harry with a flash away on top of the stun, but it's not enough. EG's ready to chase them down. Ayla and Jojo with a CC. As Core with a magnet storm into a four man crash down, keeps his mid laner alive. And EG cannot continue the chase. Core JJ with the saving play. But Pioshik's coming in now. Does Team Liquid want to find something else here? Yawn. 
almost has the enchanted crystal arrow ready to fire. Piotr goes in and drops the lambs respite immediately. EG continues running. Flash out from Armeo, dodging out from the crash down. Yawn still approaching. Enchanted crystal arrow finds a target, but it's only the enemy supported. Ayla can dash away. Harry summons the Tibbers, but it's not gonna connect in time. Ayla disengages, and EG gets back to the safety of the tier one turret. All right. Should be able to recall after that one and finally get a reset. Flowers that peel from Core JJ almost set up for another counter engage from Team Liquid, but they don't have uh, the extra power to be able to trap them inside. Take a look at the beginning though. Really good stun from Harry. Stuns Ayla on his attempted engage. And so then by the time he does get it all the way over here towards the brush, and even though Jojo can follow up with a charm, Core JJ, Magnet Storm into Crash Down Peel in front of the tower, lets Harry escape with just blowing his flash there. And Ayla invested his ultimate flash on the Rakan to go for that engage as well. So yeah, really good peel there from Team Liquid to escape. Although they weren't able to punish afterwards, so it didn't leave Evil Geniuses in a deficit. You know, Team Liquid did not push another lane while it was fully invested. They tried to make the trap happen and then couldn't get any kills. So they didn't get any extra push on a different lane and they didn't get any of the kill money and EG on reset actually still stack up second dragon. So as good of a peel as it was to not drop anybody, Evil Genius is still happy to be able to get their objective afterwards. And Team Liquid was trying to trade those neutral objectives across the map. They wanted to go for the Herald while EG secured Drake number two. But EG brings everybody down, including Revenge, to stop TL from being able to go for that. Now, does TL want to challenge for this Rift Herald? Harry not quite ready with the Tibbers. That cooldown could be a big difference maker in determining whether or not TL wants to fight for this. Armeo is still on top of the Herald. That's already secured. EG getting both neutrals here in this second rotation of the objectives. Pioshik empowered there by Harry's shield to try to step forward, but they won't find anything. EG just wins out over the course of the past couple minutes. Ah, uh, yes, but Flowers, Team Liquid have unlocked the bonus of Triple Trinity Force. They've oh, got the, the Trinity Trinity? Trinity. Uh -huh. yeah, my, my brain's in the same <laughs> place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now it's, uh, they're going to multiply. Let's see the extra power. They're going to need it because EG with Rift Herald. Okay, if you finish the tower, you can save Shelly the health. All right, so Shelly's health is saved, preserved for the second tower here, and it's a teleport behind. Annie coming in for a big stun. They don't see it. Oh, Core JJ's already down to one third HP, though. They gotta be careful here. Harry on the flank. He has the Tibbers ready to go now. Core JJ in with a Magnet Storm, and he's gotta be careful. He's already down. P.O. Shik too. He couldn't use the Lamb's Respite. EG's cutting him to pieces, and someone has to disengage, but he's already down. Armeo picking up another body as Evil Geniuses kills three. They get the Tier 2 turret. They just buried Team Liquid. Yeah, they don't see it, but they don't care, Flowers. The split second difference in Team Liquid engage there. Uh, Harry kind of paused up by the brush while the rest of Team Liquid went right in and got bursted down. It's a good turn from Evil Geniuses. When you're getting flanked like that, turn on one of the sides. Let's look at to their comp. We don't have to force dive. Just try forcing turret. Yeah, flash combo. Yeah, I charm. Don't dive, don't dive. I charm. Play poke, poke, poke. Okay, we got it. They poke, they poke, they poke. Rolls 1 HP, rolls 1 HP. Rolls flash. Yo, watch me, watch me. Look, the troll. Watch me, watch me. Real Kinder, get it. I'm charming one. Look me, look me, look me. No, 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 no. I'm taking, I'm taking, I'm taking, keep going. I'm taking, I'm taking. Any Mia, any. And you hear that. They say, they're trolling, they're trolling, yep. they're trolling. That's what you're, happens when you're positioning on a, on a team that is setting up a flank is not close enough to actually make the timing work out. Any was not there for the engage. And the rest of Team Liquid was still too close in following Evil Geniuses. So they thought that they had the, the play there with the Annie teleport flank, but because they were trying that play too hard, EG were able to counter engage uh, and just turn immediately on them, blow up these low health members and revenge good play over the Raptor pit. The blowing them up part is huge because Pioshik not being able to cast Lamb's Respite, that can turn the fight incredibly different if that ends up working out, but stopping it entirely with enough burst to just get him out of the picture, Huge for EG, in complete control of the game now, up two Drakes and 4,000 gold. Still a couple more minutes before we see either Baron or that third Drake spawn. So probably not a whole lot to fight for until about 90 seconds. All right, off that reset. Actually, Revenge gonna get chunked pretty hard in the yeah. side lane. We'll see how much Summit can get off that. There are already reinforcements headed up to the top side, so probably not too much. Good old-fashioned smite fight goes the way of the world champ. Yeah, buddy. 
Of course, when he won the world championship, there were a couple of questionable spots. <laughs> no barracks in this game! No arrows coming through for that crowd! The Kumayushi arrows probably still keeps him oh, up at night man. a couple of these times, but that time around, he gets the scuttle crap. It's all good. Got the, got the skin. Yep, got the skin. Still That's won. all that matters. Still won. All right, EG, let's see what they want to do to keep this one rolling. Under a minute now until Baron and Drake both summit. They just get ganked. Backs away in time. Armeo's mist is a big blinking red light. Get out of here. Leave. Run away now. <laughs> exactly. You better run from the mist. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Piyoshik here did get his level 11 already on Kindred. Keeping up a pretty good pace. Good vision setup from EG, trying trying a little bit of a pick play. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to get anybody. But set up for that dragon, only 20 seconds out. Biggest factor usually is the push on mid lane. But TL are making their push through bottom lane here. Harry's going to push bottom lane up to the outer turret and then make their rotation over to dragon from bottom instead of mid. Meanwhile, EG take control of the mid and we'll get that one in even deeper since there's no tower here. Summit's a, yeah. gonna have to run pretty far away from the objective and his Mega Nar times out. So good setup here from Evil Geniuses. Well, Team Liquid's uh -oh. gonna have to have a very favorable start to this fight if they wanna have any sort of a chance. Revenge eating a lot of damage here at the onset of things, but Harry's gotta be careful too. He has to flash back over the wall to get away from the EG collapse. Summit now approaching on a flank of his own. All right, Flowers, there is no Mega Nar, no Annie Tibbers, no Annie Flash for Team Liquid. Evil Geniuses have got so many cooldowns out of Team Liquid, but they're still gonna go for it. Revenge teleporting back into the fight. Harry's about to do the same. Summit building up the Nar bar. So the Mega Nar is gonna be a factor after all here. Core JJ, keep your eyes on the rel. When TL's found moments so far this game, they've been off the back of engages and CC lockdown from him. Summit keeping that Narbar charged all the way up, wants to be ready to go. The dragon is slain by Yawn of all people, as EG now having to back away. Yawn with the cleanse, baits in Ayla. Summit wants to chase after him. Core JJ with the engage, and Ayla is popped. Summit with a Mega Nar into the wall as Jojo has to dash away, and Unforgiven barely hobbles out as well. Evil geniuses, they only lost one, but TL took the Drake, and the health bar advantage is massive. They're gonna force down the tier one turret right after. And they might be able to rotate over to the Baron and bait out some more cooldowns here from EG. Looks like it's just going to be a vision play afterwards. Core JJ sweeping it out. So mid turret down, Dragon picked up, and they are able to get the vision around Baron for the next setup. Let's take another look at it. So Yon does two things. He's able to arrow Armeo just outside away from the Dragon and able to pick up the Dragon himself as well. A lot of good stuff from him. Then he cleanses the charm to get just outside the knockup from Ayla. And with that stun landing on Ayla, Core JJ goes right for him. In with the Rel engage. Being able to get that extra kill and the extra objective afterwards. Man, oh man. The game remains interesting despite what looked like a very impressive EG lead that has now shrank down to about half of what it was. They're still up 2,000. They're still up a Drake. Yawn in some serious trouble here. Flashes away over the Raptor wall to safety. That looked really dicey. Okay, there's no flash on Yawn or Harry now for Team Liquid. Two of the carries, but thankfully for them, they do have a jungle carry as well. As long as Kyoshik doesn't get fully CC'd like last time, yeah. then he should be able to save them with the Kindred Ultimates. And remember, Piyoshik got his fourth mark just about 10 minutes on the dot into the game. Nearly 23 minutes in now, he's still at four. So the Kindred has not been able to accelerate anymore. That Team Liquid lost control over the map practically in its entirety. So he hasn't had access to any more of those resources to continue building up advantages on the Kindred. Also, still no second items completed for anybody on the side of TL. Over on EG, you can see a couple of them are online. It's Nibori plus Kraken for Unforgiven Zaya. Horizon Focus now available for JoJo's Ari too. Evil Genius is starting up the Baron, forcing Team Liquid to come answer. They are not just going to immediately peel away from this one. It's not dropping exceptionally fast, though. Core JJ doesn't want to take too much poke. As TL continues pushing themselves up, Summit's ready. He's got that Narbar. He can go over the wall if he wants to go. Jojo jumps in for the Everfrost. Revenge gonna tank a whole lot of damage here with the Stardust Core is about to drop. Biyoshi dies before the Lamb's Respite again. He can't press R, and Team Liquid is gone. Evil Geniuses just killed all five of them and didn't oh, waste any time oh, oh, oh. doing it. It's ace for nothing, and Baron 
wins the prize. AJ looking clean with it, Flowers. That turn out of Baron. You can see their positioning. They're talking about it the whole time. Ash Arrow goes in. And JoJo plus Revenge. Revenge flashing over with the big Gore Drinker heal on the Renekton. Then the stun onto Pioshik. Able to lock him down. They finish him off again without getting off his Kindred ultimate. And the chase down is massive here. Knock up there from Ayla. JoJo getting the reset on his ult from Ari. Oh, oh so Revenge big. is popping off. He knows how huge that was for EG. He got so low inside the Baron, but it doesn't matter. On Renekton, he goes in with the Q Gore Drinker right into the middle of them, flashes outside the pit, heals up, gets right onto Pioshik. They burst down that Kindred again, Flowers, and critically outplay in the team fight to earn themselves now a 7,000 gold lead. And EG has been doing a really good job of layering that CC on the Kindred and not giving Pioshik the chance to ever cast the ultimate. Kindred without the ultimate is not half the champion she is if she's able to throw that into the team fight, cause all of this chaos, and evil geniuses are reaping the rewards. Yeah, but I mean, both of these teams have explosive engage, so whichever one gets the first step, has that initiative in the early move, is going to be able to snowball here. All righty, EG continuing to move this game forward. <laughs> Baron for another two minutes. Looks like Double Lift is giving Azale's head a nice little rub for good luck. <laughs> Are you smarter than? Are you luckier than? Teleport to top side for revenge uh, to be able to answer. You know, Nar was going for the objective bounty shutdown on top side, so that's why they invest the extra cooldown there. Just make sure there's no objective bounty comebacks here for Team Liquid. Yeah, Hullbreaker's so good at forcing down those turrets, playing sides like this. But is it good enough to get you away from the Revenge JoJo combination? Revenge with a slice, doesn't hit a target, so there is no dice. Everfrost into a charm, into a follow-up burst from the Renekton. All Summit can do is try to buy as much time as possible. He is not getting away from this one, and Revenge gets the payday. Yeah, the alcove up there, known as the Nar Graveyard, Nowhere else he's going. Meanwhile, Team Liquid, they will get several objective bounties, though. Minions doing the objective work on top side. They do uh, end up getting that tower, and the dragon will be taken. But TL, they are going to sacrifice this. I think it's still a good call. It looks a little weird to be like, oh, open base. We're going to open fort here down mid and let EG move in. But EG already had gotten the pick on Summit. So they knew without Summit, we're not winning that fight anyways. And they did technically get two objective bounty shutdowns for it. But now Evil Geniuses wants to use this last 25 seconds of Baron to force down another tier two turret, get another bunch of gold in their pockets, get that gold lead back up to about seven and a half thousand if they can force this one down. But Team Liquid rallies to the location fast enough to defend that remaining tier two. Meanwhile, back at the base, Revenge just making sure that he keeps these waves buffed up with Baron, trying to put some pressure onto the Nexus turrets themselves. 4v4 here in the top side, still at the tier two turret. It's very low. If it gets much lower than this, EG can just force a fight underneath that burst the turret down instantly and try to go from that angle if they want. But it looks like they're gonna choose to back away. Discretion is the better part of Valor. EG does not want to throw away this lead they built for themselves. Not yet, Flowers. <laughs> Ayla oh. going in, that's a Sorelia's pop. They are finally going to force him back. Ayla getting stunned up here. Enchanted oh, Crystal Arrow ready to lock him down, not too. Not yet, buddy. <laughs> Unlucky. That's not where Ayla wanted to be. But for EG, they'll trade him away for the Tier 2 turret. So it's still net positive on gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They back up the 7K. They went, they yeah, went positive yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Got that secondary outer turret. Um, did drop one more as far as a little bit of comeback money. But yeah, you're not super worried, right? Because there's a there's a long way that TL have to claw back to actually complete this comeback in this game. That being said, one inhibitor being down is, is actually feasible to deal with, especially because mid lane being down is actually the easier inhibitor with super minions to deal with. Just trying to go mid, clear those out with everybody and then try and rotate over anyway. If you can actually use that to get a little bit more farm, then maybe TL could squeeze something out, but it's going to take a really good engage from them. So again, we always mention step one in that, especially when you have a Chemtech uh, Soul Rift here, pop all these Scryer's Blooms, yep. you know, get Core JJ and Harry some really good vision coverage to be able to surprise engage onto any EG member that's out of position. Meanwhile, Ooh. Ward. Okay. 
Evil Genius is trying to make their move here. Jojo ready to spirit rush over the wall. Everfrost not going to find the mark, but the charm does. Summit is stuck on the front line. He is not tanky enough to live through this without Lamb's respite. He'll get a little bit of a heal. Flashes out to try to escape, but Armeo is ready to execute him. Evil Genius is winning the fight so far with that first kill, but now Summit being the only one dead, nearly joined by Revenge. He's low, but he's not gone yet as the remainder of Team Liquid has to fall back. All four players heading back into the base. Super Minions pressuring that mid lane. Evil Genius is keeping the chase alive, keeping the pressure on. Trying to pick up that extra kill on Tibbers, but Harry got away fast enough that Tibbers gets to instantly blink back to safety. Very, very lucky, because otherwise Tibbers is dead. Yeah, unlucky towers aren't going to be able to blink to safety. EG still going to siege here and with the teleport back. Ooh, Yawn forced to cleanse there thanks to the Everfrost from Jojo. But now Armeo's here on the front. Core JJ with a massive engage onto multiple targets, but it ain't gonna be enough. EG's too far ahead. Pioshik and Harry, the only two left standing. The Magnet Storm crash down was not followed up with enough damage to guarantee anything there for TL. And Evil Geniuses, they're feeling great about how things are. Yeah, they are. They're also feeling pretty good about their pre-game trash talk flowers. JoJo called it yesterday. You always love the pre-game trash talk, especially more as well than we're so much more. <laughs> waiting till after you won. Not only did he say they were overrated, but they then gave them the Kindred World Champion and they dealt with it seamlessly. Yeah. Fight after fight, bursting him down before he can get his ultimate off. Uh, evil geniuses feel like they're dealing a large blow to Team Liquid in summer here. And EG making a statement this game. They definitely deserve their spot at the top of the table. Revenge might be in a little bit of trouble here, but he feels confident with Ayla coming for the flank. Yeah, Ayla trying to pop the quickness to go in after these guys. Again, is JoJo swooping in with the Everfrost. They're going to lock down the first kill there on Core JJ. And again, like I said, every time something good has happened this game for TL, it's been because of Core JJ's engages, his CC. With him out of the picture, I don't think EG has anything they're Probably afraid game. of. EG with a five-man push in the enemy base. All three inhibitors down now. Mid lane inhibitor is about to respawn, but EG might just end the game before it has a chance to. Pioshik, Yawn, Harry, and Summit all trying to defend here. Summit about to transform. That's the one thing EG has to keep an eye on here. Make sure they don't get caught off by. Yeah, this is so hard for Team Liquid. They have no time in their advantage here. EG have Baron buff and three inhibitors down, giving super minions. They're actually going to give them some breathing room, though. They relent on their pressure in the base and they retreat for the dragon which is just dragon number three i guess they had a decent amount of golden inventory and you want to play it safer here uh, yeah but definitely you're nine thousand gold up you could I, i'm with you i would have went for the end there i would say full core press we stick around we re-kill mid inhibitor we wait with our baron buff that still had plenty of time, had two, oh, two minutes plus on it. And with all three inhibitors down, you get double lines of super minions. So all you really have to do is keep up pressure and stand there in the base. And eventually the barreled up super minions do your work for the in, uh, Nexus Towers. But they go for the safer route. They spend that money, Flowers. Yeah. And then they return to finish the job after taking away any of the comeback possibilities that Team Liquid could have. So it adds a couple minutes onto the timer here but it still should have the same result. All right, EG, you're looking to end it here now. Harry stepping away from JoJo's engage this time, will not be caught by the charm. Armeo charging up that Spectral Maw, but not gonna find any targets available for it. Oh, wow. Revenging a lot of damage from Summit, down about 40% HP here on the Renekton, but remember, he still has Dominus ready to cast. Yeah, I mean, maybe it was better to be cautious here, EG. Still can take a lot of damage, and Team Liquid have pretty big engage, as we've been trying to highlight. Here comes the extra pushing pressure, though. Yeah, this is what it's all about. These doubled up super minions are about to create a much bigger problem for Team Liquid. Revenge got chunked so low, though. Kind of rough for him to play with, with no rage, 50% HP, no flash either. Late game team fights with no flash, Renekton is definitely not the same animal right as he is with a full hp bar <laughs> he's more of an iguana flash. yeah exactly the rest of eg though they're trying to keep up the siege and tl really Whoa. good defense from them harry with a nice job they're avoiding some of the charm from jojo but now ayla goes in finds a knock up on the two lambs rest but finally going to be used in time core jj stays alive thanks Come to his in. jungler ayla and unforgiven trying Come to get in. away summit coming around from behind looks for the angle here with the eg carries in the back line 
Revenge critically low. The same for multiple players here on Evil Geniuses. Summit chasing after Armeo, forcing him to go over the wall here in full retreat. Team Liquid holds the line. TL with the defense here, and Summit's not done. He's gonna try and chase down Armeo. It's a super blast cone. It, there he goes. The Gnar has chosen to yeet, and Armeo is deleted from the game. Nicely done, Summit. He picks one up there. It's gonna buy him 45 seconds of at least a little bit less pressure. But again, it's these super minions doubled up. This is constantly flooding into the base. At least here in about 30 seconds, that bottom lane inhibitor is going to respawn. That'll stop the doubled up super minions in the other lanes. Yeah, but that Nexus Tower took a beating. It's almost dead. Will slowly regenerate a little bit. I, in hindsight, now I'm kind of happy that they went with the safer route, e.g. instead of trying to, <laughs> to push an end and then giving you know, possible dragon objective bounty. So due to the good defense here from Team Liquid huddling, defending their Nexus towers, they've got a nice angle for possible comeback actually in this game, despite the mega lead that Evil Genius has had. And I gotta give props to Harry for having a quick beat there, stepping away from the Everfrosts and Charms of JoJo's Ari, making sure that they got the opportunity to try to counter-engage instead, forcing that early stopwatch out of JoJo, giving themselves the opportunity to actually hit back against these guys. Piyoshik being able to fire off Lamb's Respite, like I've been saying the whole game, <laughs> there's a big difference between whether or not that ulti comes out. Certainly is, certainly is. EG trying to return to keep the pressure on. Probably with the results of the last fight, just keep them trapped inside base for another minute. And you've got plenty of vision leading up to Baron. We already know how good EG's turn off of Baron was. We saw it demonstrated in the last time around. So if you've got complete warding in all of the river uh, and the jungle heading up towards Baron, they should be able to have a nice little setup there. If you really want to reduce risk though, it's only going to be another 30 seconds after Baron spawns to, to have Dragon Soul pop up. Right. And that has a lot less risk with a very similar uh, reward for yourselves to be able to actually get Soul. Revenge eating a ton of damage from somebody here. This Gnar is a problem in the 1v1. Revenge uses his Dominus, loses his Sterix. Pretty important there, Summit, just picking that up very easily. The Gnar only needs one more item and he's full build. This guy is very small. See what they can do. Revenge, as long as he saves his flash though, uh, it will have that Renekton threat for the late game team fight. That his one trick move basically for Renekton <laughs> in the late game is to be able to flash stun. So we'll see if he can actually make it combine with Ayla and Armeo plus Jojo CC here. That's the key to their turn. Flashes are available for them. Meanwhile, Yon at least has his cleanse, but no flash for repositioning, so he has to be a little bit more careful. And here they go. This thing's burning down very quickly. EG going after the Baron. They've already secured it. Team Liquid now backing away, not trying to hard force anything where they have to play into their opponent's position. All right, round two, Flowers. That dragon I talked about, about to arrive on Summoner's Rift, and EG with the Baron. They go for the pick. Jojo with a flash engage for the charm, but Harry stays alive thanks to the Lamb's Rest. But Evil Genius is now trying to continue the chase as Revenge goes in for the flash. Piyoshi kites back, and Jojo's about to eat more damage from Yawn. The volley will find him. Armeo's looking to chase down the enemy carry. He finds the Ash. Jojo stays alive. Summit's not going to get a whole lot in return as everybody on EG is still alive. And that'll do it. EG was too far ahead. They'll win the final fight. Revenge teleporting into the bottom lane now to reinforce that minion wave. Armeo and the rest of EG marching down the mid lane. Summit trying to cut some waves, see if maybe they can delay this long enough. But Evil Geniuses have a 5v3. One of those Nexus turrets is already mostly dead. Revenge goes in and stuns up Piyoshik. Summit tries to find the damage under the back line on the other side of the base. He's not Megan R just yet. Unforgiven goes up into the skies. The feathers fly. It's a shutdown over to the AD carry from EG. The Nexus turrets are going to go. And Team Liquid is going to fall. Evil Geniuses take them down. 38 minutes in. And EG are your second best team in the LCS. Undisputed, unforgiven, absolute stomp here. Nicely played. TL with some good defense trying